If you are a mechanical engineer with the aspirations to become a successful mechanical design engineer or if you are already working into CAD domain and want to transform your career to the next level, do watch this video till end. My name is Kevin Kutto and in this video I am going to explain top 10 mechanical design skills which every mechanical design engineer should learn in order to build successful design career. Let's begin this video by understanding the typical top roles into design. The first role is a CAD engineer or CAD draftsman. Now this is a CAD tool specific role in which in-depth CAD execution knowledge is mandatory. Now generally CAD engineers work under the supervision of mechanical design engineers in order to build CAD models and drafting of the engineering drawings. The second role is mechanical design engineer. Now this role is all about designing a product which could work as intended. In other words, it's all about transforming vague voice of customers into the tangible functional product which meets all the product requirements. Now mechanical design engineer's role is more versatile and challenging role because it's not easy at all to make product work and still meeting hundreds of design specifications as per customer's need and government agency needs. And that's why I have put down this video to bring your attention to the top 10 knowledge and skill areas in mechanical design which have potential to transform your career to the next level. Interestingly, these skills are required in design irrespective of product or industry you are working in. It's sad to see so many engineers are struggling in their career even after spending tons of money in learning multiple CAD skills. This video could save a lot of headache for you in the future. The first skill we are talking here is about manufacturing and product domains. Manufacturing domain knowledge helps design engineers to deliver a design which could be manufactured in a mass production without any defects and could be easily assemblable with a minimum cycle time. Now we can prepare anything into the CAD models, but to make it manufacturable is a task and for that manufacturing domain knowledge is mandatory. Each manufacturing domain such as plastic, sheet metal, casting, forging, machining or 3D printing offer unique manufacturing processes, materials, design based practices, different joining methods, tooling challenges, post processing methods, defects and mitigations and their analysis for manufacturability. I always suggest to learn as many manufacturing domains as possible because in any given product we have all kind of parts. The safe bet is to start with the plastic and sheet metal domains. As most of the components in automobile, home appliances, aerospace or furniture industries are made up of either plastic or sheet metals. Also, these two domains are a bit complex in terms of manufacturing, tooling and materials. So engineers with this knowledge of plastic and sheet metals are in great demand with the design industry. But according to me, one should learn other manufacturing domains as well as you progress into your career. Now apart from manufacturing domains, engineer can also opt for tool design or fixture design. You might have heard about BIW fixture design. That is basically a fixture design for BIW and assembling the parts of BIW together. It's critical to understand that these domains have nothing to do with these manufacturing domains. So if any institute is offering you package of plastic and sheet metal domains along with the fixture and tool design domains, now you know that it's the waste of time and money. Product design knowledge like car interiors or exteriors, the components such as dashboard, seating systems, instrument panels, door trim, center console, lighting systems, their knowledge along with the other components in the cars like engines, transmissions or other industries like home appliances, this knowledge could be complementary knowledge to your manufacturing domain knowledge based upon your area of interest. For example, if you want to work with a home appliance or other industry, you need not learn this product knowledge into automobile and it is true vice versa as well. In the initial phases of your career, do not bind yourself with the product domains. If you learn the plastic and sheet metal, you can work in any industry where plastic and sheet metal knowledge is needed, irrespective of the products. Got my point? The second 
critical skill is NPD or NPI process. Now this process covers step by step how a vague voice of customer is transformed into a tangible and functional product to meet customer requirements as well as legal requirements. Now NPD process involves hundreds of tools, techniques, methodologies, deliverables, documents and records, project management tools, inputs, outputs, which are connected with each other. Until you understand this interconnection, you can't deliver a functional product. I have created a brief video just to explain overall steps of NPD process. You can watch it as well. The third critical skill is design for variation. Now the skill helps you to finalize dimensional scheme on the drawing, finalize tolerances for dimensions as well as for geometric controls, optimize the tolerances and dimensions to meet the function, and minimize the cost of manufacturing. You should focus on learning GDNT as per ASME or ISO standard, general tolerances as per ISO standard, engineering fits, tolerance type of analysis, manufacturing process capability calculations, and how we could identify critical dimensions into the engineering drawings as per the function. If you don't have these skills, you can't deliver a optimized design. Now, before we proceed further, just wanted to bring to your notice that you can learn these design skills daily on our website www.designgeeks.com through daily design sparkles and number of blogs and this is totally free you can also help me to reach out to the larger audience by hitting the like button for this video now let's continue with the next skill the fourth skill is innovation mindset innovation is a systematic process and it has many methods which we could leverage. Now, engineers with the knowledge of innovation tools, concurrent engineering, design thinking, can deliver potential design concepts to meet the product functions. Knowledge of how to select this best concept out of the total lot is also very important. The fifth design skill is DFMEA and Design Verification Plan or DBP. This is very powerful skill in terms of analyzing how function of the product could fail, their impact on the customer and the legal requirements, possible root causes of that failure, design mitigation of that, and how we can test it in order to detect the failure. Now, out of DFMA, we also get design verification plan or test plan for product validation. There are two main standards which are widely used for DFMA. AIG standard, which is American standard, and AIG BDA standard, which is the combined effect of American and European agencies. The sixth design skill is systematic problem solving. It consists of plan, do, check, act cycle, which is also known as PDCA cycle, lambda cycle. We have A2D and A3 systematic problem solving techniques. We have root cause analysis methods. We have containment, corrective and preventive actions. And all these skills are very important. Without these skills, engineers can't solve the design problems. The seventh design skill is Design for X. Now, Design for X includes design for manufacturing, design for assembly, design for reliability, serviceability, design for loads. And that means we have to do a lot of calculations here in terms of strength of material, theory of machine, calculations related to heat transfer because there can be thermal loads as well. We can design for sustainability, design for modularity, and dozens of other factors. If you know how to design for X, you can deliver a functional design with great confidence. The eighth design skill is value analysis and value engineering, which is also popularly known as BAVE. The value engineering and value analysis is a methodology. And we use this methodology to increase value of the product by optimizing the function with the minimum possible cost. Knowledge of value engineering help design engineers to deliver great product value for the customers. The ninth design skill is PPAP and APQP. Now, production part approval or PPAP documentation includes almost 18 documents and records as per IATF 16949 standard. Design engineers have to play critical role in terms of preparing this documentation and records as well as in their approval. So PPAP knowledge is very important for design engineers. 
The tenth design skill is CAD skills. Unfortunately, most of the engineers waste their time and money in learning multiple CAD and simulation tools. CAD tools like CATIA, CREO, UGNX, SOLIDWORKS are very popular in design industries. My suggestion for fresher level is to focus only on two CAD softwares, but learn them in great details and as per your area of interest. That means first you have to finalize in which domain you want to work on and then accordingly you have to select the right CAD softwares. For example, in automobile industries, CATIA plus Creo or UGNX, one of that could be very good choice. If you want to work with home appliances, Creo plus SOLIDWORKS could be a very good combination to learn. If you want to work with aerospace industries, CATIA plus UGNX or Creo could be a very good choice. If you want to work in tool design or fixture design domains, CATIA or SOLIDWORKS or UGNX, this could be a very good choice. So choose to learn CAD softwares based upon your interest of domains. Now I have created a video on this topic where I have explained the strengths and weaknesses of all the softwares and their choices. You can watch it. Now obviously apart from all these skills, soft skills like leadership, communication, presentation skills, interview skills are also crucial to be successful in design career. Now if you want to learn these skills from highly qualified and experienced mentors at the Design Geeks, you can visit our website www.designgeeks.com and enroll for first free demo session. Our mentorship has helped to transform careers of many mechanical engineers into product design skills. If you have any question about the courses or the skill requirements, you can give us a call at 83290-29492 for the consultation purpose. Thanks for watching this video and wish you all the best for your successful design career. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as share this video with your friends who are aspiring to build their career into product design and development. Also connect with me on LinkedIn.